Hey there everybody, welcome back to Getting Started with Git. Okay, this is the next video in our series and today we're gonna actually be talking about, a, we're basically answering a question that a lot of you have had and the question is, um, you've noticed that if you've been learning Git, you know, through this series, it's something I didn't really quite realize, but um, you guys, when you start working in the terminal, you start using Git, um, it's demanding you to enter your username and password every single time that you submit something or push, make a push request or something like that. And so this is kind of standard behavior, so don't feel bad if that's what you're getting, um, that you have need to log in with your GitHub account every time you submit it. Um, that's obviously for security reasons. However, you may have noticed that I don't have to do that. And so I wanted to show you guys how you don't, you can set it up so you don't have to do that either okay so that's what today's video is about is basically how to set up ssh keys with github and our computers so that um, we don't need to set use our username and password every time we make a git request okay or a git push it would be really nice to just do git push click enter have it push up and not have to do anything more than that not typing in a password or anything like that okay so let's go ahead and get started on this um, what i'm going to be doing today is showing you how to do this, um, we're gonna be first of all generating an SSH key on our computer, and then we're gonna link that up to GitHub. All right, so you'll obviously need a GitHub account, which hopefully you already have, and then you'll need the terminal running to get the rest of this working, okay? So the other thing I'm gonna say is that this, these same commands are gonna work on Windows, Linux, and Mac, okay? So obviously I'm using it on Mac, but don't worry, the same commands will work on Linux or Windows as well. The only difference, if you're on Mac and Linux, you're gonna be following along like I am using the terminal. If you're on Windows, you're gonna be following along doing the same commands, but instead of using like the command prompt, you're gonna be using the, um, what do they call it? The git bash, okay? So when you installed git for Windows, you got a git bash, um, terminal thing, and you're gonna be doing these commands inside the git bash, okay? But otherwise, they're the same exact commands, all right? So let's go ahead and do this. Um, okay, first things first, what we're gonna do is we're gonna open up either our terminal or our uh, git bash, and you're gonna type SSH, sorry, SSH dash keygen, and this is gonna generate a new SSH key, okay? We're gonna pass in a few flags, so make sure you just follow along here. Of course, if you need to copy and paste any of these things, I'm gonna have links in the description for all the code. Probably, it'll probably go to devmarketer.io, which will have all the links on that website, because it's really hard to get code into the descriptions of YouTube videos, because a lot of the characters in code get denied by YouTube, and so I can't post it. So I'll probably post a link to Dev Marketer where you can go and copy and paste the code from there, because I got full control over that. All right, so we're gonna pass in a flag called, the type is gonna be RSA, so that's the dash T, now how many, we're gonna pass in another flag called dash B, which is how many bytes we want this to be. We're gonna say we want it 4,096 bytes. It needs to be 4,096, don't ask me why, I really don't know. Okay, um, next we're gonna pass in another flag, and this flag is um, the label that we want to um, create the key gen with. So it's a capital C, so dash capital C, and then you're going to, in quotes, you're gonna put an email address that, um, that you're gonna sign your, that you wanna sign your, um, uh, basically your GitHub email address, but it's gonna be the emails that you wanna sign your Git account with, okay? So go ahead and put an email address in here. Um, make sure you spell it right, you're not gonna have a chance to confirm it. And um, that's it, this is the command, ssh keygen and then the flag of T for type is RSA, the, the bytes flag is 4096, and then the uh, C flag is gonna be our email address. You're gonna go ahead and click enter. It's gonna generate a public and private key gen pair. You're gonna get two key gens basically. One's public, one's private, one stays on your computer, the other one gets passed up to GitHub. Next, you need to enter the file where you wanna save the key. Don't press anything here, just let it save in the default folder, okay? So just leave this blank and click enter again. It's gonna ask you for a passphrase. Um, I do recommend you do a passphrase. The passphrase is basically your your password, okay? If you click enter, you won't have one. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and type the same password I used to log into my computer. That way it's easier for me to remember. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I'm typing it now. Oh shit. It's gonna have you do it again. I might have typed the wrong one in. Let's see, okay, I did it correctly. So you're typing in it twice and you're not gonna see any indication on the screen that you typed in a character. So, um, Anyway, just to keep that in mind, it's not broken, just you type it in, have faith that it works, you'll have two chances to do it, or to kind of confirm it, and then you will generate the key. So that's what we've done here. You can see that we've actually successfully 
um, generated the key. It's now stored in our users folder under SSH and then the RSA and RSA pub. There's two of them. So there's the main one, ID RSA, and then there's the public one, which is R R ID RSA pub, okay? That generates that. You've got a fingerprint, you've got this random art, and then you're ready to continue. The random art I don't think does anything. It just kind of looks cool. All right, so these commands have been the same for Windows, Macs, and Linux. So hopefully you guys got that. Now what we need to do is we need to add our SSH key to the SSH agent, okay? So let's go ahead and get this one done. We're gonna be doing um, eval, and then in quotes, you're going to do dollar sign, kind of like jQuery. <laughs> it's not jQuery though, so I shouldn't say that, but anyway, um, SSH agent. Oh, and then you're gonna wanna pass in a flag here, dash S. All right, now close the quotes like that, so it's eval, and then in quotes, you're gonna do this dollar sign, SSH agent, dash S. Go ahead and click enter. You're gonna get an agent PID. Your number is gonna be different, don't worry about that. And um, okay, now that we've got that, we can actually add it to our SSH key. So let's go ahead and do SSH dash add. And you don't really need to remember or know all this stuff, honestly, you just need to follow along. You don't do this very often. Once you set this up, you're not gonna have to worry. Like the last time I did this was like a year ago. I don't need to do it very often. So don't worry about you not understanding all of these little things. Next we're gonna do SSH add space, and then we're going to send add it to our, our IDRSA key. Go ahead and click enter. And now we're basically done. Oh, got to type in the password. Let's go ahead and do that. And now we're basically done, okay? So we've added that to our SSH key and we have now set up our SSH key on our computer. We've done half of what we need to do to get this working. So now what we can do, I'm gonna go ahead and clear this out. It's um, Command K. And um, yeah, so now what we need to do is add this to our um, GitHub account. So if we go over to our GitHub account, which is where I am right now, you can see down here, I'm in the settings. So you're gonna click under your profile, um, go to settings, it's gonna bring you here, and then we're gonna click on SSH and GPG keys, okay? And then you'll see any of your SSH keys up in this area here. I went ahead and deleted my old one before um, I started the video, so I don't have any, but you can have multiple SSH keys. So if you have a work computer, a laptop, a home desktop, you can have different SSH keys for each of those computers, and then they'll all be in here and you can they, it'll allow any of them to access them. So you can have multiple SSH keys in here. Okay, we're gonna click new SSH key to generate a new one and we're going to give this a title, okay? So in this case, you can give it whatever you want. I'm just gonna call mine MacBook Pro and that's just because that's the computer that I'm generating the SSH key on. It helps me identify it. This is only for you though to know what this key is because you're not gonna recognize the key. So that way if you have multiple keys in there, you'll look at the title to understand which one belongs to which. So if you have a work computer, you could type, you could just call this work computer, work desktop, work laptop, whatever you wanna call it, just to give it a name so you can identify it. No one's gonna see it other than you, so just do whatever you gotta do. And then last, we paste in the RSA key into here. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna show you how to do that because it's actually slightly tricky, okay? So what we're gonna do, this one is not the same for Mac, Windows, or Linux. So on Mac, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do PB, copy. And then we're gonna copy, you need to do the less than, and we're basically gonna um, take the location of our SSH key, or our public SSH key, so ID RSA dot pub, okay? And we're going, we're basically saying to copy this location to our clipboard, that's what this PB copy does, okay? So that way it's on my clipboard and I can, just I can just paste it into this text field here, okay? So now if I click enter on this, I'm not gonna get anything, but it copies it to my clipboard, so if I come over here, and paste, <clears throat> got, a, <clears throat> got a frog in my throat. Um, if I paste here, then all of a sudden I've got my SSH key. We're good to go. Okay, now if you're on Windows, this is going to be very similar, but um, the only difference is instead of PB copy, you're gonna just write clip, okay? So you're gonna do clip, the dollar sign, and then you're going to do, um, you're the location, which is the same location. So everything else that you see up here, this is what I would do if I was on uh, Windows is you would do this command and then Linux is um, a little bit different. You actually need to install um, Xclip. So what I'm going to do is you need to install Xclip if you don't already have that and then you're going to use Xclip to copy it. Okay, so I'm actually not going to go ahead and give that one. I'll link that down to if you go to the in the description, you can go to devmarketer.io. I'll have instructions on there on how to do it because it's a little more complicated and I can't really demonstrate it since I don't have Linux right now. Okay. But basically you wanna copy this to your clipboard. 
Um, once you get it on your clipboard, you can paste it into this text field and then click add SSH key. You can see now that in our GitHub account, we've got MacBook Pro and then we've got our SSH key in here. If you had multiple, they would just line up under here. And now this as now um, GitHub has linked the, your computer, which has this SSH key, has linked it to your account, the one I'm logged into right now. So now if I submit something to GitHub through the terminal, it's going to look at the SSH key. It's going to know that it must belong to me, Alex, because... Um, I've linked it now in here. I've linked my account to this SSH key, and it's just going to assume now that anything coming from this SSH key is mine. This is important. If you sell your computer, you want to make sure you delete. You go into GitHub and delete this SSH key because um, you know someone could have access to it, access to it. You obviously don't want to do this on any sort of public computer or a computer you're borrowing from a friend. So just keep that in mind because they're no longer going to have to type in your username and password to get in to access stuff on GitHub. Okay, so anyway, that's all you need to do. Now, let's go ahead and just quickly demonstrate how we can um, use, how we now use this in a project. So let's head on over to our getting started project. I've got that located in my sites. Okay, so now I've got, I'm in my project. Let's go ahead and just work on, let's make a quick change to our project. So if we go ls, we can see we've got two files, the readme and the second file. So let's edit our readme now. Well, let's edit the second file. So I'm going to use nano. Um, second file.txt. Okay, so this is just going to open it up inside of a mini text editor inside of my terminal. But you could open this up in Sublime or something like that if you wanted as well. This is the second file. I'm just going to add another line here. We're going to say um, added SSH key like that. And I'm going to go ahead and save this. So I do Control X, click Y, and then click Enter to save. All right, so now I've saved this file. So now if I run git status, you can see that I've modified second file.txt. Okay, so let's go ahead and do what we normally do. We're going to uh, git add, git commit. We're going to make a commit message. We're going to say added SSH key um, testing. All right, we're going to click enter. That's going to now create the commit. So now what we do, so we obviously add, we then we make a commit. Then what we do, we put push to GitHub. So we're going to do git push origin master. Let's click enter. And now it's going to, you're going to get one little message here that you, the first time that you do it. And then once you confirm this, you won't ever have to do it again. Okay. So it says the authenticity of github.com cannot be established. Basically it's saying, Hey, you've never accessed github.com before using this SSH key. Do you want to allow GitHub to see your SSH key is basically what this is saying. Okay. And it's saying that this is the SSH key it's going to share with GitHub. You need to say yes, it's okay to share. So click type yes and click enter. And it's gonna say permanently, it gives you a warning. It sounds menacing, but it's not that big of a deal. But it says permanently added GitHub to your list of known hosts, okay? So what this means is that now on your computer, it's saved um, this GitHub link, um, basically does GitHub IP address to our computer. So now our computer won't ask us again if we need to um, confirm with GitHub because it's just going to know GitHub is safe and it's just going to give the SSH key to GitHub. GitHub knows that it belongs to our accounts. So we'll be good to go. Now, I got this rejected. And the reason I got this rejected is um, you guys, it should go right through. Mine got rejected because I had actually already pushed to GitHub once before. Then I pulled back a request, something we haven't talked about before. I reset the request without resetting it on GitHub. So GitHub is farther ahead than my the project I just pushed. So I got rejected because of that. It has nothing to do with the SSH key. It's just because of how I set up um, uh, of something I did. So I just need to fix that real quick and then we'll be good to go. So let me go ahead and fix that real quick and then we're gonna make one more push. And this time when we do the push, it should just slide right through, no problems. Okay, so I went ahead and fixed my problem. This is something we're gonna talk about in the future. Um, basically, I had to force my uh, push, okay, because um, just to allow Git to basically modify and keep it sync in sync with my local repository. Okay, so we're not going to get into that. But now what I want to do is I want to show you that um, if I do Git status, everything should be hunky dory. Yep, it is. Okay. Now um, let's go ahead and let's just ls this. So we've got our two files. Now let's go ahead and change our readme. So let's do another nano readme.md. Oh, that was the ms. Um, nano readme.md. And then now we're going to um added a third line to test our ssh key okay so i just wanted to make a third line and edit on readme i'm gonna go ahead and save this real quick 
And um, now we're gonna do git status, git commit, um, git add, because now we got this file needs to be edited, git commit m. And now we're going to say uh, um, edited readme. Okay, so now we made another change. So now what we would wanna do is we wanna do git push. And when we put, you can do git push origin master or git push. And you can see now when you get git push, it, um, it went ahead and just pushed it right through. We didn't need to do anything else. It just went right on through, which is what exactly what you guys wanted, all right? So anyway, just wanted to make that make sense for people. I wanted um, people to understand that. And um, a lot of people have been asking about basically how to get SSH keys set up. And now you should know because that's all there is to it. So it seems like it's a little tricky, but it's really not that bad. You're just generating the SSH key. Then you're going to copy the SSH key and you're going to paste it into GitHub. Okay. So um, that's all I got for you guys today. Um, coming up next, we're going to ta start talking about branches and resetting and also cloning. So these are kind of good concepts to understand inside of Git. And then moving on from there, we'll start talking about things like tags and releases and things like that as well. Okay, so there's still a lot coming up in this tutorial. I just wanted to go ahead and make this video. It was a really good timing because I had just reset my computer, so I didn't currently have an SSH key on my computer. So it worked out really good for making the video um, for you guys today since I had to set it up for myself anyway. Now I am gonna go back and reset my SSH key because the SSH keys should never be made public. Since this is going out to the world, anyone's gonna be able to see my SSH key. So as soon as this video ends, I'm gonna redo everything I just did to generate a new SSH key. And the one that actually gets saved in my GitHub account now will be one that you guys have never seen before. But that I just wanted to use that as a demonstration so you guys could see it. So that's all I got for you guys today. Stay tuned. I got a lot more coming up for Git. I hope you guys are finding value in this series. I've gotten a lot of great feedback so far. So I'm glad that you guys are interested in it. Um, understanding Git is crucial, especially to getting a job in computer programming. But even when you work by yourself, having Git is just so, so powerful. Being able to move back in time at any point arbitrary point in time basically as long as you do your commits right is really really awesome um, being able to make branches we'll talk about soon it adds a lot of power to your application to building and coding um, even if you're just working by yourself okay if you're working with a team i don't know how you would even do this so if you didn't if i don't know how you would work with a team if you didn't have git so either way git is just an incredible powerful tool and i'm really glad that you guys are taking the time to learn it because it's a skill that is going to really pay for itself really fast. All right, that's all I got for you guys. I am gonna see you guys in the next video. Until then, peace.